technology is constantly evolving and we have certainly seen a lot of changes with commercial trucks in the last few years. But have you ever wondered how things are designed and how those specifications are established to make a commercial truck operate the way it is or to have a specific part added to that truck so that it can achieve certain different performance characteristics? I've certainly thought about that. And I'm certainly happy to have my guest today, Robert Caton, with us. He's the Application Engineer Manager at Horton. Now, Rob leads a group of engineers who spec Horton products on heavy-duty truck applications. And he's been with the company for over 10 years. He was part of the product development group, and he's had various roles over the years. So he has been integral in the developing the latest and greatest fan drive products that we've seen coming from Horton. So he's got a lot of experience in this area, and I'm very glad to have him on the show. Rob, welcome to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. So glad to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jamie. So I'm not an engineer. The closest I got to that was when I worked at a remanufacturing facility and I was part of production. So when I think of engineering, I kind of think of it as one thing, but you're talking about application engineering. That's something different. Can you explain for us what that is? Yeah. So at Horton, we make fans and fan drives and we, we have two groups. We have a product development group that kind of creates the latest and greatest product type. And then we have an application engineering department, which is really customer focused. And the goal is applying the production Horton products on new vehicle applications. Okay. So I'm envisioning in your manufacturing facility, you've got all these production lines, you're making these products and the application engineering department says, okay, we've got these products. Now, where is an opportunity to use these products maybe in an application that wasn't originally part of the concept, but it's a good fit for some reason. Do I have that right? Yeah, for the most part. Really what we do is we take existing applications and put them into customer applications. What I mean by that is different truck types, different truck spec builds. You obviously have your heavy duty trucks, your medium duty trucks, you have your different engine options. All of those require a different fan and fan drive. And we make sure that the right Horton product is in the right application. Okay, I get it. So, you know, you might be buying a Kenworth, but one Kenworth is being sent to the oil fields of Texas or Alberta, and another Kenworth is over the road, and it's a completely different environment. So based on vocation, it has different needs. Yep, exactly. It has different cooling needs. Obviously, you have different engine types that you can pick from when buying your truck. You have your Cummins, you have your MX from Packard, you have your A26 from Navistar, and your Troy Diesel from Daimler or Freightliner. All of those in a specific truck model will have a different fan and fan drive because the cooling needs are different, the fit is different. So we work with the engine manufacturers and the truck OEs to make sure the right fan is in the application that provides the sufficient cooling and gets the, the customer the best mileage and the best reliability. So explain to me how that interaction between your company, Horton, and one of these OEs works. Like, what are the mechanics behind the interactions between the two companies? Yeah, so the way it works at Horton is we have dedicated application engineers for each OE. So each Horton engineer works regularly with the same engineers from Freightliner, the same engineers from PACR, same engineers from Navistar. They develop a pretty close relationship and work well together. And what happens is they come to Horton and they say, we have a new truck development project, or we want to upgrade an existing truck, or even, hey, we have a new customer that needs a new use or needs to add something to the truck. They come to us and say, hey, we need a fan and we need a fan drive that meets certain specs. So we work on, again, projects that need to be completed in six months. We work on projects with the new prototype trucks, which are two, three, four years down the line. And we provide all of the fans and fan drives that they may need to meet their needs. And the stakes are very high because we all know with work trucks, they have to make money. (laughs) They have to be reliable. And so the stakes are high, both for the truck OE, because they don't want to put out something that doesn't work. And then obviously for Horton's reputation, you want to be part of the solution. So the stakes are high for your company as well, because you want to maintain a great relationship with all of these OEM manufacturers and engine manufacturers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, reliability is absolutely key. And to meet the reliability requirements from the OEs, we're very stringent at Horton. We make sure that uh, T's are crossed, I's are dotted. And one way we do that is we take this 
technical specifications and the requirements from the customer for a given application. We spec the right fan. It could have nine blades, could have 11 blades, also could have different diameters. Then we make that up with the right clutch product. That could be a variable speed drive like an RCX or LCX from Horton. It could be a pneumatic drive like our DM Advantage or DM Advantage 2-speed. We make sure that the right fan drive is in that application. And then all that initial work happens on the computer in CAD software. Once we have sort of the model set up, then we start going through the validation with the OEs. And that could take two, three years. For some projects, we're working on trucks that go into production in 2024, 2025 right now. To ensure the product is reliable, we work very closely with the OEs to make sure that we have prototypes on design validation trucks, they call them, which is usually when they build the first three to five trucks. We make sure we have the right product on when they do quality validation builds, which somewhere in like the 40 to 50 truck build, they make sure that they can kind of build these in higher volumes, that they get more reliability data off the truck. And then we also help them when they go to production and officially release the design. And again, we're working on right now the 2024, 2025 truck models from PACR and Navistar and Freightliner. So this application engineering process has proved to be obviously very successful because you wouldn't have that many layers and have it working so closely together if it wasn't. like What makes it so successful, though, for the end user once they get the truck and it's got the product on it that they need for the vocation they're doing? So our customers obviously have customers, and that's the end user. So in that way, we try to get right close with the end user and figure out what problems they're having, what needs they may have, what benefit from those needs that we can provide. And we bring that voice a lot of times to the OE engineers. And an example may be there may be a truck in Canada and, you know, obviously it gets pretty cold. It's only the minus 30 Celsius today. I'm not sure what that is Fahrenheit. I have to do the math on pretty that close real quick. To minus 30 Fahrenheit. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so a truck radiator and fan is usually spec to climb out of a hill out of Death Valley. Obviously, that's too much cooling for someone who's in the dead of winter in, in Alaska or Canada. And their truck may overcool and they may have issues there. So we try to get on the ground and understand that those needs and maybe there's a better product and a better fan that they could use so that they don't overcool, knowing that they're never going to climb out of Death Valley in July. And we bring that voice to the customer. I mean, also with serviceability, I think we've all worked on our own cars and been frustrated at why I have to take off four brackets to get to the part I want to replace. We try to make sure our products are easily serviceable because we know that at some point a mechanic's going to have to get in there and put on a reman or repair kit. That makes me think it was a GM product. I think it was a Pontiac in the 90s that you actually had to unbolt the motor mount on one side, lift the engine to change the oil filter. That's an example where application engineering has failed us all. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It was easy to make on the production line. And if that's the only thing you're incentivized to care about, you end up with that. So yeah, we try to bring a, a voice of our customer's customer to the conversation. And I think we found a lot of success in that. And also that makes the end user want to spec a Horton fan drive and fan over a competitor. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Don't have a heavy duty part number and need to look up a part? Go to parts.diesellaptops.com or download the app on Apple or Android to create your free account. Looking for high-quality fuel injection for heavy-duty applications? Having one supplier for fuel injection allows you to better serve customers by providing them with a complete line which increases your sales and profitability. Learn more at ambacinternational.com aftermarket. We're back from our break. And before the break, we were talking about application engineering, the process, why it's successful, how it works. Rob, you did a great job of explaining that to us. Now, let's focus on how fan drives specifically get designed. How do cooling targets and engine mounting affect the design and specs of a fan drive? You know, just before the break, we were talking about in the past, there has been times when certain vehicles have been built in a way that makes it very difficult to maintain. So I'd like to hear more about that. Yeah. So the fan and the fan drive are kind of actually the last, I like to think of it as like the, the component that connects the loop. So when new trucks are designed, obviously the body style changes. They do different things to try to improve aerodynamics, which affect fuel efficiency. Then they start picking an engine. You know, there's always the latest and greatest from Cummins, and there's always the latest and greatest from each of the OEs and their engines. 
then that goes into a radiator choice. So if you have a real slim down hood and a real small radiator, that's going to drive your cooling needs way up. But essentially the fan and fan driver are selected last. So when you have your engine and you understand your radiator size, that then drives your fan selection, which then drives your fan drive selection. And so what that means for us is we got to work quick because by the time everything's finally solidified, we finally know all of our specs and, and have to work quickly to make a product so that they can meet their production deadlines. It also means that we have to be agile because if anything changes upstream in the design, so to speak, we have to change our drive. If they move the engine a little bit, if they move the radiator a little bit, all of a sudden, if they do a DV test and the engine doesn't hit the cooling targets, we have to do a fire drill and see what we can do to help the customer out and solve their problem. So it's a fun job to do because we get to work closely with our customer and get to solve problems frequently. And, and I enjoy that. And I think the fellow application engineers get to enjoy that. Is there some advantage in some ways to being the last in that long line? Because, I mean, it gives you a chance if you're the first and then they're coming back to you and saying, oh, well, then we had this problem, this problem and this problem. You're constantly having to go back and redesign. At least with this, you're looking at all of the metrics and able to come up with a solution. I guess in some ways, there's got to be a bit of an advantage. Yeah, I think you're right. You get a lot of points with the customer when you're able to meet their needs and solve their problems at the end very quickly. You know, if an engineer somewhere along the way maybe didn't select the right radiator at the truck OEs, we can sort of cover that up for them a little bit. If, you know, they're not hitting their cooling targets, some CFD, some analysis didn't quite prove to be correct, then we can help solve that problem and, and get the truck out into production. There is some advantage to that. And we see a big advantage in being really close to our customers and giving them exactly what they need as quickly as they need it. So back in the days when I was working at a remanufacturing facility very early in my career, I was familiar with Horton fan clutches. And now they're all fan drives, it seems. And so has there been just incremental changes to the specs over the last few years? Or has the changes been quite dramatic? Like, What's been the trend in the last few years? And where are we going over the next few years? I should say fan drive and fan clutch, maybe we could still, they're still synonyms. You can use them interchangeably a little bit. What's really coming down the pipeline, engine temperatures are increasing. So if you can increase the engine temperature, the diesel engine runs more efficient. That's obviously really important. And so higher engine temps mean just greater cooling demand sometimes. So we have to you know, find the right drive, the right fan that meets those high cooling needs. And now variable speed drives are becoming more common. Horton has our LCX and RCX product lines, which you'll see now on new Kenworth and Peterbilts. Those variable speed or viscous fan clutches or fan drives provide just the right amount of cooling for any given situation. So Theoretically, the engine runs in the optimal temperature range more. You get better fuel efficiency. You run the fan at a slower speed, which also increases fuel efficiency. So we're seeing a little bit of you know next generation of technology coming into the industry and providing a benefit to the customers. And then at uh, down the line, I think electrification is coming. And it's a obviously a very popular buzzword. And Horton is going to provide electric fans for those battery electric and fuel cell electric vehicles as well. So industry is changing, but essentially it's still the same because we were given a cooling demand and some geometry, and we have to figure out how to cool the engine, cool the system in the best way possible. And I was just thinking of the changes to exhaust requirements in 2027, right? Where there's a, there's a new target there for the reduction of NOx even further. So that's going to change specs. And as you said, Alternate power sources and powertrains are going to come into play here. So it's a dynamic time for the industry. And I can see that Horton's going to have to make some adjustments as things change. In preparation for our conversation, I came across the term truck manufacturability. How does that impact the way you design your fan drives? Is that what we've been talking about the whole time in essence, or is there more to it? Yeah, in, in essence. So when the OE engineers start putting together design and when their manufacturing people look at it, they look at it from a perspective of how do I build this as cost efficient as I can with the highest level of quality on our production lines. And that may be kind of like we talked before with your removing engine mounts. It means that maybe serviceability or end user experience might not be completely factored in. And again, at Horton, really, we really try to get to our customer's customer and figure out their complaints, their voice, and bring that into the conversation. I mean, we also then try to balance 
that with the OE manufacturability. We try to design a fan clutch in a way that it can easily be dropped in and assembled onto the engine quickly and efficiently. We try to reduce weight as much as possible for the assemblers, but then also for the, you know, it's important to have as light a drive as possible on the truck. Yeah, I can see how there's so many different factors that have to be taken into consideration. And if you ignore one, like for example, on the aftermarket side, once this thing is manufactured and out into the market, it's got to be serviced. It's got to be repaired. There has to be the supply of parts and the ability to take it out and fix it if there's a problem. So those factors can't be ignored. Otherwise, you're going to have some very unhappy fleets and vehicle owners, and that's no good long-term for anybody. Yeah, exactly. There's a total cost of ownership. And designing a product that Maybe it'll be a little bit cheaper up front for the OE to manufacture, maybe a little bit lower purchase price doesn't necessarily correlate with lower total cost of ownership overall if it takes 10 hours to replace a fan drive. That is a subject we talk about here on the Heavy Duty Parts Report all the time. That purchase price is not the number you need to concern yourself with when you're charged with fixing these things. So really at the end of the day, if you just want people to remember one thing about what we've been talking about today, what's that one thing? It's that Horton, you're our customer's customer. Your voice is critical and we want to hear it. There's Horton sales reps across the country, across North America. If you have complaints, we elevate them and we try to get it into the conversation when we're designing and implementing fan drives and fans. Yes, and I do know that manufacturers reps also love to hear the success stories, not just the complaints. You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and we've been speaking with Rob Caton, the Application Engineer Manager at Horton. To learn more about Horton, visit hortonww.com. Links are in the show notes. Rob, thank you so much for being on the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Jamie. It was a pleasure. Thank you for watching this video. Click here to subscribe to the Heavy Duty Parts Report YouTube channel and click here to watch another great episode.